Sup guys, this is Derek from moreplatesmoredates.com. Today we're going to be talking about how to get an aesthetic tiny waist. So when it comes to getting a tiny waist, there are a few things to consider. And first off, genetics will dictate the width of your actual bones. So if you have like super wide hip bones, there's nothing you can do about that. But there are things you can do to make your waist appear small even if it might not necessarily actually be on a tape measure. So objectively, it will appear tiny if you develop your physique to a certain level and focus on some key aspects. And that's what I'm going to delve into right now. So first thing, start priority training your back and shoulders. Uh, this means that if your current efforts are resulting in lackluster back or shoulder development, start training back and shoulders twice a week or hitting them with a higher priority over other body parts. So anytime a body part I have starts to blatantly lag behind in progression, the only logical thing to do is to give it more attention than the other ones that are surpassing it in order to bring it back up to par with the other ones. So if you have a lagging back, for example, and you train uh, like five times a week with two rest days, just like as a hy hypothetical example, a solid approach would be uh, to do your a heavy back training session on Wednesday and then wait until Saturday or Sunday, which would normally be your rest days, and then hit it again. And this time uh, with a higher rep scheme and lighter weights to really drive blood into the muscle and focus more on stretching the fascia and hypertrophy instead of uh, smashing heavy weights like twice a week. So if you can't handle doing two entire back or shoulder workouts each week, though, then start doing mini touch-ups on them. If you need them, an example of this would be um, like say on your arm workout, if you have an arm workout, then you do like one or two back exercises before you hit your biceps. So it'll take some experimentation on your part, but essentially what you need to do is to start forcing your back to grow by training it harder than you have been up to now if it's been plateaued. So um, by priority training your back and shoulders, you can make the top of your torso appear much wider which relative to your waist will make your waist appear a lot smaller so developing that crazy v taper you can effectively create an illusion that makes it appear as though you have a super small waist even though it might not actually be so take me for example uh, my shoulders and my back are probably my two best body parts but i'm by no means genetically blessed with a sub 30 inch waist but if you look at like my lat spread pictures and stuff like that, um, you'd probably think I have a pretty small waist measurement, but typically it's like 32, 33 inches. And only when I'm totally shredded is it 31, I think is the lowest I've ever gotten it. So, and that's just because of the development I have on the top part of my body. It just makes it appear a lot smaller. So second thing, do lots of lat pull downs, rows and deadlifts. That's I attribute m most of my back development to these three exercises or variations of these exercises. Obviously, there's different kind of rows you can do. T-bar rows, like cable rows, um, bent over dumbbell rows. There's tons of different bar, like underhand barbell rows. There's tons of stuff you can do. So I make sure that I always start my back workouts off with some lat work. And my favorite exercise is a simple lat pull down. Um, I make sure by my fourth set... There's a decent amount of blood in the lats and my back is fully warmed up. And then I hit a fifth drop set right after my fourth set where I decrease the weight by 50% and I crank out as many reps as I can to failure. And if I have a spotter, I'll go past failure. But yeah, so as far as just like driving tons of blood into the lats and using progressive overload, um, where you're obviously always trying to get stronger, I find is the best way to add width to your lats and give your back more of an obvious v taper kind of shape that you'd be looking for to get that small waist look and rows are fantastic for back thickness and development as well and it's kind of what i attribute the cobra back to that i have i have a decent one at least and as well as deadlifts which is also a great exercise for overall not just back thickness and development but overall body composition and development like it stimulates your whole central nervous system and it requires exertion from your entire body as a whole to perform the movement. So that's why deadlifts, even though it's a back exercise, 
it induces a great amount of growth in every body part, even though they aren't necessarily directly being utilized during the exercise. So the uh, third tip, and this is the most important one of all, get leaner. The number one way to a crazy V taper is simply to get leaner. One of the most common areas people hold fat is in their midsection and waist. And when fat accumulates here, it starts to create like a rectangle shape instead of a V taper. And once you get completely shredded though, and you have no fat sitting on your waist, you'll see truly how aesthetic your physique can be and how much of a V taper you actually have. And despite my back being very well developed, um, if I got super fat, it would still, I would lose my V taper. It would just look like a rectangle. And even if I have tons of muscle mass on me, if I let myself get like extremely out of control fat, then it would ruin the V taper. So once I get to sub 10% though, the V taper is super obvious and it produces like a very aesthetic kind of, you know, small waist type physique, which is appealing. And yeah, so make sure before you assume that you have shit genetics or something, tr actually try getting shredded and see what you really look like and then determine what kind of weak areas you need to bring up because you actually don't know what lagging body parts you truly have until you're diced and you see exactly what is kind of missing that you need to work on. So now I'm going to go over myths and misconceptions about the waist size in bodybuilding. So First thing, do deadlifts and squats actually increase your waist size? I know a lot of people steer clear of these exercises because they think they're going to have like HGH gut or something, or they think their waist is going to get like blown out if they do too many heavy deadlifts. And I'm not saying that they don't increase the waist size at all, but I think it's typically over exaggerated how much these exercises can increase your waist size. And if I was to have to pick one or the other, I would say they don't. Um, personally, I have never seen an increase in my waist size from deadlifts or squats. And I know plenty of individuals who haven't noticed any negative ramifications on their V taper from deadlifts or squats. And there are plenty of top competitors who are famous for their tiny looking waist, but deadlift and squat heavy on a regular basis. A uh, perfect example of that is the guy who competed at the recent classic physique Olympia. I think he placed uh, second, uh, Chris Bumstead. He has like the nuttiest V taper super small looking waist and he's actually well known for his heavy deadlifts and squats which he does on a regular basis and it hasn't negatively impacted his waistline and there are many others that also deadlift and squat on a regular basis who have that still aesthetic appealing small waist look so the truth behind the waist size of top bodybuilders i'm going to delve into quick now so the truth is when you gain more muscle you gain more muscle everywhere it's not just localized to one spot. And this includes your obliques and your overall waist size. You will never see a 260 pound shredded bodybuilder with a 30 inch waist. It just simply isn't possible. And the reason for this is that when you gain muscle, even though you could be completely shredded, your waist size still increases as your muscle mass level increases. So Yes, there are 260 pound top bodybuilders with small looking waist, but if you physically took a tape measure to their waist and measured it yourself, you'd find that they are all much larger than they appear. And it's the huge back and shoulders that create a V taper illusion of a tiny waist. And this kind of goes back to what I was saying about the deadlifts and squats and stuff is I think a lot of guys as they're getting bigger and gaining chasing size, eating tons of food, trying to pack on weight, they attribute the increase in their waist size to the deadlifts and squats that they might be doing. But in reality, it's just the force feeding of food and trying to get super huge and probably their genetic structure in general that's kind of dictating how their waist grows as their body grows along with it kind of thing. The real reason why blown out waists occur in bodybuilding, despite what kind of misconceptions circulate in the community. The real reason why blown out waists are so prominent in the circuit nowadays, the pro circuit is a combination of insulin abuse, overeating, eating a ton of processed foods and or tons of carbs and predetermined genetic structure. So like I could go have a huge cheat day right now and binge on pizza and chips and ice cream all day and make my waist and gut look absolutely disgusting in a matter of the next three hours if I wanted to.
but give me a few days after that to diet on low carbs and a calorie deficit, drinking tons of water, and I could transform my physique seemingly overnight back into that, you know, like aesthetic, tight, wasted look. And the reason a lot of bodybuilders get that blown out waist is just the frequency and duration of which they do these things that I mentioned, the insulin abuse, the eating a thousand grams of carbs a day, eating like however many thousand calories, force feeding themselves, trying to get to 300 pounds. Those are the kind of guys that suffer this kind of fate of a blown out waist is because you can only do that so often and eventually it could become a permanent thing. But as far as it being blamed on, you know, like HGH guts and like all this stuff, it's the majority of it just comes down to diet. Like I guarantee you, if even if you have like distension from eating a big junk food meal, go no carb for the next 24 hours. Then the next morning you wake up, you'll look so much better and be able to do your vacuum again if you could do it before that cheat day. So like there's just a lot of myths and misconceptions around the waist and the gut and bodybuilding. So I hope this video was kind of informative, educational, entertaining. I hope you guys got something out of it. Please like, subscribe, comment, check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Subscribe there. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.